And for those of you who are new, we uh, are welcome to the Hawkeye Trading Session. This is Wednesday evening, 9.30 p.m. East Coast time. And the trading for an exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before de deciding to invest in foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objective, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with the foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. This is a live trading room. It is for educational purposes only. No financial advice or recommendations will be provided. Any trades taken during this live session is not a recommendation or a suggestion that you should also do the same. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Do not trade money that you cannot afford to lose. And before trading live, always operate with a written trade plan that identifies rules for entries, exits, targets, and risk management. Having said all that, let's go over to the charts and let me uh, get a Euro, a US Swiss chart up here. Hang on, give me a, just a second here. And it looks like we have an alert on the British US, although I'm not seeing it on this. Let me try this again here, see if it, there we go. Uh, oh, we have one at the British US, at 8.30, we have a U.S. Swiss. I'm going to go to the British U.S. since that, I think that's probably a better pair to trade at this time of night. So we're going to be looking at the, um, let's see, I need to make sure you're seeing my screen here. And share screen. Number two, I'm back on my desktop again. So that's kind of a nice thing. And it's an ascending wedge on the British US. And that was at 9.15. So we're going, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the 15 minute chart. We're gonna mark a, mark a vertical line at 9.15. And we're gonna double check to make sure it was an ascending wedge, which means we're going to start with the A on the, and we'll be looking at pivot highs and pivot lows uh, right now, this is where the day break started. So this is from five o'clock this evening to the current time. And here's the significant high, here's the low. And if you look back at yes, at the day's high, it looks like it was quite a bit higher. So you can see there's a strong downtrend happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the wedge. It's ascending. So I'm gonna start with the low end with my triangle tool. I'm gonna start here at the bottom, gonna come up to the top come down to tuck it in as close to where the wedge alert was and then bring it on up to the top and draw my wedge in that manner. Looks like this thing's already starting to break out of the bottom. And we're gonna see what kind of strength we have. We have the US is a level seven with the British as a level three. The US is the second currency of the British US pair. And therefore we'll be looking at the dollar being stronger, if the dollar is stronger, we're looking at to go down and to uh, be looking at a short position. Looks like this thing's already kind of left the trade, left the, the this initial wedge where the alert was. But we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one down. Uh, maybe I can't do that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to move this one over, put this with the flat top. And as we have a nice blue candle coming up. So I'm going to bring this down to where this was the low of the chart of the, uh, of the wedge. Um, but my triangle's going in the wrong direction. So I need to make adjustments to that. I want to see the triangle being pointed in the opposite direction than where it is. So I'm going to, I'm just going to leave it right in this area bring this one up a little bit. Hmm, this tool is not cooperating very well tonight. Bring this over here. It wasn't ascending, so we really want to have the bottom coming up towards the top. 
I think I'll just leave it just like it is right here. And we're going to see if it seems, if this price will come up to the bottom of the trend. This is not my favorite time of the day to, to trade, but we'll see what we can do with this with this um, pair. I'm going to go to my one minute chart and try and tweak those points of that triangle. See if we can get a little bit better fit on it. So this one's already, uh, let's see, this is 938. It's already 15 minutes past the where the alert was. Let's see if I can bring this down here. I want to find a nice little, a slight trend up. When it says ascending, I want to get the A started low and come up towards where the alert was. Here was where the alert ended. This was the alert. This was the candle before the alert, before it cut any of the price lines. And this was right where the, this is the one minute chart at the end of the first minute after the alert. So I'm going to bring that on down to that. And we'll see if we can see if it comes back up. Right now we have a nice strong move down, a little flag pattern coming up. It's actually showing a little bit of a, of a wedge with any wedge or outside of the wedge. Normally what we would do, this thing looks like it's already out of the chute. It may come back and give us a chance to retrace it. But what we'd be looking at doing is what we do is, what I like to see is have a close, a draw a trend line on the bottom and on the top of where the alert wedge was and move it two pips away for a buy zone or a sell zone or a buy zone. This is gonna be a sell zone here. And I'm just gonna move this down from uh, 30.025 to 30.3100. 30, right about there. And I'm gonna make this my sell zone. And then up on top, I'm going to do the same thing on the top for a buy zone, That's expecting it to break out of the wedge, which it's already done that, but we'll go through the motions here since it's already, it may come back and give us another chance to get into it. And so this is at 31.12.8, and we'll go with 31.14.8. And we'll make this our buy zone. And I'm going to lock this so it doesn't move on me. And right now we're looking at, at, we had a nice move down. Let's see how many pips that was. From the break of the wedge to the bottom. That was 13 pips coming back to retrace where the wedge was. Now right now we're looking at, um, See if it's going to come back and retest the wedge area and maybe give us another chance to go short. Right now, the British pound is getting stronger with the on the one minute chart, but we're actually looking at a higher time frame. The dollar is still strong, we're looking for a short. This, so, this would be just a pullback area. In fact, it's already closed out. It's a little bit problematic here, but it may give us another opportunity. I will not be taking any live trades tonight just because I made my target for the day and I prefer to trade early in the morning. This is, uh, again, this is an evening for demonstration purposes and show everybody how things work and uh, as we progress on to the uh, daytime. And I'm going to unmute everybody's microphones so that if anybody has any questions, uh, you'll be allowed to uh, just ask them. If you don't want to use your microphone, just use the question answer box and we'll try and take answer your questions from there. And so as we see this thing pulling back, or it's pulling up up into our where our, our zone was, where the, we had the nice big move down. Dollar is still strong, dollar is still strong. And we have a nice little hook. The fact this is a strong retrace we could possibly take this trade now. Even it, it didn't get it. We already left the zone. It's coming back to retest it, and it's having a hard time retesting. What I'd, I'd like to see is see these moving averages on the one-minute chart to be in the right order, and that means that I'd like to see the green below the yellow 
the yellow below the white, came up and retested this white area, the white 62. This is an exponential 62. The green is the fi exponential five moving average and the yellow is an, is an exponential 13. I like seeing if it's going short, I wanna see the green, have a green, yellow, white, have the green leading the, leading the pack. And right now they, they're not in the right order, but I like to see them consolidate and then switch orders, have the green come back, switch below the yellow, and then possibly take the trade short again. That would be what I'd be looking at for a pullback. On the five minute chart, we have the 62, which is the purple one. We have a yellow, which is coming up retesting it. And we have the green below. So these are in the proper order. And on the 15 minute chart, let me take some of the stuff off of here so we can see it. And on the 15 minute chart, let's see, where is our, we have our 62 is way up here. We have the five and 13 in the proper order to go short. And right now I'm looking to see the RSI get a little bit of a hook to head back down, finding a peak. And I'd like to see it bounce off of the, one of these moving averages or these uh, trend lines. I'm going to see if we can get this thing up. Have a little, it's got a little bit of hook right here. We have a nice little red candle. I would like to see these moving averages switch, switch around a little bit. It may not be quite done going to the upside. And like I said, if anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, speak up and use your microphone. Be, I'll be more apt to, you know, I don't usually look at the chats. I have uh, Christine here. She's helped me watch the monitors and the chat boxes. Uh, but if you have a microphone, uh, feel free to use it. And right now I'm just looking to see if this thing's going to retest the uh, the wedge area. I said, oftentimes you don't have that much of a movement. Uh, this is still only 9.30 at night. The British US uh, is more apt to be using their, uh, be more apt to have a little bit more volatility during the London session and the US session. Right now we're just entering into the Asian session and this one may not be as uh, volatile as uh, some of the other charts, others may be. Let's see if that ever showed up. U.S. Swiss is much the same way. And we wait. Uh, yes, Christine. On the um, the whole moving average, averages um, at the bottom. Yes. The one minute is the top one, or the no, bottom? the, the, the top bottom. one. The top, the bottom one is one minute. The middle one is the five minute, and the top one is the fifteen. Okay, I always, you know. Yeah. We just have a new alert. You want me to go look at it? Uh, would you please? Let's see. Would sure. you, Euro US uh, nine forty five. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if we want. Let's take a look. Kind of, uh, yeah, why don't you take a look at that one, and I'm going to watch this one here to see if it uh, does anything to 
Right now I'm looking for these moving averages to get themselves in the proper order. If I can get a close below the yellow and get the the screen moving you average to flip rice. over. I had it perfect and you just left it in there and I open it up though and I'm letting it cool off so it don't be too wet. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I think he's talking with us. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and mute his mic. And we're getting the switch over. And uh, let's see, we have, let's see. This does not really fit the criteria that we're looking at because usually we try to make it so that it comes, we catch it when it comes down. If it comes back and retests our, our entry zone and it's pretty much doing that, I said, I'd like to see a cross of the, the five and the, and the 13 moving average at this point. And I also want to see the RSI is all of these moving in the right direction. So let's see if we can get this. We have a little bit of a basing up here, starting to break out. If I can get a close below, if I can get a close below this candle. Let's see, that's at uh, 96, 87. That would give us our seven, that we can get seven pips. See if it has a little more punch to the upside. Doesn't look like the euro's doing that much here. Oops. Maybe. Oh, there we go. I had it on a replay. Oh. That's, <laughs> that's what happened. Because yeah. I was like, that's yeah, I said, I said it's looking happened. good. <laughs> Let's see, that was at 9 9.45, I think it was. Yes. yes. Okay. We'll keep I'm an sorry. eye on this. 9.45 descending. Okay, we're going to descending. So we're looking at from top to bottom, coming over here to the top. Let's check and see where the lowest pivot before. Come back and see if we can tuck it in, how close we can tuck it into the alert. Euro is, uh, right now they're both kind of strong. Dollar's a little bit stronger than the Euro. Could see this break into the downside. It's already had a nice big down move. Let's go back to our British pound. I thought it was if we can get a get a break over and a close below this blue line, I think we have a shot at taking this thing short. So you a question when you get a chance? Yes. Yes. What's the question? Um, I I just went in and collected about two or three pips from a sale in the GBP. Are you saying that it's expected to come back down in short order? I'm looking at two. Uh, right now, we had a nice strong move down. Right now, it's retesting where the wedge was. And if we can get it to, and right now, we had okay. nice close below. Our, all our moving averages on our one minute chart are in the right order. We had the close below. We didn't okay. quite get the green, the five, mi five period moving average. We didn't quite get it to cross over the 13. But uh, right now the RSIs are coming up on this. It's, if we can get a hook on the RSIs, get, get these RSIs up to the 89% and get a hook on it. Right now, the we're getting hooks on all three of these charts. Everything is red, so we're still looking to go short on the whole moving averages. Okay. And uh, it's coming up. It's still testing this. This is this was a zone where we we drew the uh, we had the wedge, and then we drew a two pip parallel zone to the bottom of the wedge where it broke out, and that was just coming yes. back to retest that. And this is a nice little flag pattern coming in right now. And if you uh, so, if you were to draw a trend line, 
this is actually kind of a, a wedge just outside of the wedge. Had it here, uh, we had the low. Now we're, we're forming another high. And then we have the the trend. You see where the C is, if you can see where we have a little bit of a, it's not quite formed quite yet. We have an anchor, here's a hit. And right now we have, this is it's forming sort of like we have, let me see if I can blow this up here a little bit on the one minute chart here. So this is sort of a secondary wedge that we're looking at where we have the, let me bring this down here a little bit here. There's an anchor, here's a hit, and we'll bring the C up here to the top. And then we have this area coming in on the bottom. If we can get a close below this blue candle right here, this one came down, it wicked down, then came right back up and retested the top of the wedge. And we're starting to get a hook again. It's coming up very near where the where it broke out the first time. And I'll be willing to take the trade right here. Now this is I'm gonna do this in demo. I'm not totally convinced this is going to work out because of the time of day, but it's, it's got the setup to do so. We have all of our moving averages are correct. We have the hook on the RSI. We have three whole moving averages that are working out. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing short after I see a break and close below the blue line. I'm just going to get, get everything set up and get ready to do this. So you're, you're, you're judging well. Ah, uh, you're using the one minute chart to, to yes. help you. Okay. Yeah, we're using the one minute chart. We're only going for what we do uh, pretty much in this uh, classroom. We try to go for five to seven pips with a uh, high uh, high lot size. So our right. stops are our stops are very tight, and our targets are relatively tight as well. And so that way we can. Go, we're going for, like I said, we're only going for five to seven pips. And we have about 13 pip move coming down to this point. We're getting okay. the break below this wedge. We're getting the wake break below this blue line. See where our Fibonacci lines are. This is a one minute chart. These are seven pips apart. The green to the blue is seven pips. We're about right in the middle. And the red would be, this would be our pretty much our target area right down here by the where the B is. Yeah. Right. And we'll see if we can get a close. nice close. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing short. Right. We're going to lose two pips just on the spread. I find the spreads to be a little bit wider this time of night too. So a lot of times during the daytime, you'll see like about one and a half uh, pip spread. But everything looks like it's moving to the downside. The dollar is still strong. Dollar is the second currency of the pair. And you already made it. What's that? You already, you already made the, the sale? You I just, uh, yeah, I, I just, I just entered, well, I entered when this candle came down and pretty much as it closed this blue line. Now it started to retrace a little bit, but the, the, here's a trend line that I drew. This is like yeah. a secondary wedge. It came down, broke that, broke the, have a lower close from this blue candle right here. And right now it's, it's, Still, it's kind of basing, but we'll just see what happens with this. Okay. Seems as if it's going to go in a consolidation period a bit. Yeah, it's consolidating right now. But we had this uh, nice big move down. We had a nice retracement coming back. And a lot of times when it goes down, it comes back up. And it will, once this breaks, it oftentimes we'll get a nice little run coming down. Okay. So like, this is not, again, like I said, this is not, there's not a lot of volatility this time of night. Uh, most of the time you'll get some setups at this time, but they won't really materialize until sometimes the one, two, three o'clock in the morning, East Coast time. And what lot size are you using? Well, we have a position in the, uh, what we do is we have a position size indicator. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. 
Um, uh, looking for my, here, let's see. Bear with me a second, I'll see if I can get it. Those, those trend lines and sandals that you're drawing, um, they are fairly new to me. <laughs> the, uh, the, these fit lines, the, these, these lines? Yeah, well, talking, not these the lines right line. here, you're talking about or the, or the trend lines? Not the trend lines, the, the, tri the, the triangle. The triangle. Basically, a triangle is yeah. that's what I use to draw the wedges. And basically, all it really is, it's, uh, it's a way of drawing trend lines. Because really, all a wedge is, is, is a series of trend lines. What that triangle tool does, okay. and I'm, so really what I'm doing is I'm connecting a couple points. I try and get, find three points that are in alignment. And I have, uh, for example, like right here, we have. Uh, if I draw this trend line like like this, you see where there's like a there's an anchor. I have an anchor, and then I have a hit, and I have another hit. So there's three points right along that trend line that are significant. And all that tri okay. this tri all this triangle tool does, it allows me to draw two trend lines with the same tool movement. Plus, it gives me another angle to be able to uh, uh, to work with. But that's basically all. All it is is just being able to draw the wedge uh, with. Right. Uh, the, the two uh, two trend lines. That's really all that is. I, I haven't been I haven't been getting to join these live calls because of my work timing, but I'll definitely rewatch the videos. On yeah, the watch weekend. the video. Yeah, that's one reason we're doing these uh, this time of night. This is not my favorite time to be uh, trading and and showing, but we're trying to do these so that people that are working during the daytime have the ability to uh, catch a live session at times. Yeah. So basically what, what this was, yeah. So basically what this triangle does, it, it gave me, it allowed me to draw a trend line, but it gave me my four points. So I have a low, a high, and then I can just draw. So basically like I have a, an AC line and I have a BD line, and then I can kind of move this around. But what's nice about this tool is that if I can kind of tuck this in to where I can catch a hit and I can catch another sub secondary trend all within the same tool. And then, the, so this, this is creating its own little trend line right in itself right here. Okay. But really oh, right by now- By the way, where did set your stop loss, by the way? My stop loss is, I usually use a seven pips, seven to 10 pips stop loss. In this case, I actually like to move this thing up a little bit higher. I wanna keep it, the stop loss, Out of out of harm's way, basically. So we have this is where our our, our trend line was. Where our, here's where the original wedge was, and I just built I just put a parallel. I put it here was the original wedge. Here was where the wedge alert was. I drew the wedge, and then I drew another little parallel to the bottom, and another parallel to the top of the wedge, just two pips away, and that gives me a an entry zone. So that ideally, what I'd like to see happen. This one was too fast. But normally you'll see where the wedge will, where the price will come down, close inside this area, come back, retest the wedge, and then break down. This one never really did that. This one just came straight on down. Uh, so that's, it was hard to get an entry in this. This is pretty much like a secondary entry. But if this, but this would be the zone that if it comes back up into this area, that it could, we could take it short, but on the same token, the way this wedge fell, here's the upper trend line. So right now, if this price comes and breaks this red line, it could go up higher, or if it breaks the green line. Right now, I'm looking at this green line being a somewhat of a support area where it comes up, touches the green line, and comes back down again. If it breaks the green line and breaks the tr this red line, then all bets are off and we'll probably get out of the trade before it ever hits our stop. I like, I said, I like keeping the stop pretty much above. Ideally, I'd like to keep it all the way up here, but that's going to be, that's 13 pips, so that's not too bad. And my take profit is actually normally seven pips. Now, I don't expect it to, I don't expect it to take my stop. I'll, I'll be out of it before it gets up that high. 
and that's and that's uh, and generally I, I watch the trade. I don't usually walk away from it. Now this time at night, if I got into this trade live, then I would set my stop, set my target, and go to bed and hope for the best. But I really don't like uh, praying, hoping that something's going to work out for me. I'd rather just sit and watch it. But right now you can see we're still respect to the top of this. We had nice move down, strong move up, build like its own little wedge right here. It's got a flat top, and right now it's still struggling to get up any higher. And so this this fib line, this is a predetermined price price line. As is this one, as is this one. Oh, this uh, all these FR FPRP lines, supply lines. Uh, those are predetermined from an indicator that we use. And it usually shows us price points where we expect price to go to or to depart from. And this is, a, so right now, this is a fairly strong move, a strong support line. You can see where it came up. It broke it, couldn't hardly close. Broke it, tagged it, couldn't close. Tagged it, couldn't close. So this is a pretty strong area. And now it's looking, now it's starting to break out of the bottom. And one, one way we can also determine a target is we use the strong move down. We use this Fibonacci tool over here. I'll start from up here, come down to the bottom. And oftentimes if it retraces, in this case it retraced uh, uh, between 50 and 60% of the, of the down move, the next target area would be down, I would be looking at being down around this area. Usually what I'll do is I'll draw a box from here to here. And I'll move it halfway up. And then this would be my this would be a target area to the down move. And I'll take this off. But you can see like right now over the last let's see I'm on a one minute chart. From, from this low to pretty much right on the high here. It's only travel it's only moved six pips. And that's one reason why it's a little hard to get your uh, your target this time of night because you have to wait a long time before it actually finally breaks. This was probably an earlier break than you normally would get. But you see it's just going sideways right now. As I took this just for a reference to kind of show you how slow this thing's going to be before it's either going to break or what it's going to do. Right now from uh, 135 to in the last 40 minutes, it hasn't moved more than six pips in the last 40 minutes. During the daytime, you'll get, uh, you, we'll get moves like this all within a couple of minutes more regularly. Now back to that price uh, chart or that, let me see if I can find that here. Yeah, Rasheen lost connect connectivity and he's not seeing the mute. So I just told him to keep trying, we're still here. Okay. He was the gentleman that was asking for that. Oh, oh, he, was, oh he was, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for keeping an eye on that for me, Christine. Sure. Uh, let's see, where did I put this thing? I've been trading off my laptop for the last week and I've got to figure out where I have some of my files mm -hmm. here. Maybe in your PowerPoint? Well, it's it's I have it I have it on a flash drive on my on my laptop. I don't have my I didn't put it on this. Oh, okay. uh, I do have a I do have a file with all these things on it. I just have to find it. Maybe by the time he comes back, I'll be able to find it. Yeah. And right now, we're still still watching this trade. So far, it's still moving in our direction. 
or trying to. Yeah, depending on how this one works out, maybe we can look at the um, the other one that came up. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, that was the um, U.S. Swiss, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, Rasheen said, I'm not seeing the unmute options like before. So I'll just tell him to type in um, in the question and answer. Oh, I can probably unmute him. Here, I can unmute him. Okay. There he goes. Now you should be able, be able to uh, to talk. Thank you, guys. There you are. I'm still looking for that uh, chart for you. Okay. I see we have new alerts. Well, we had the let's see. The last alert we had was the way I'm looking here was a Euro US at. 945 okay. and we're looking at the british us which was at 915 yeah and actually we're uh i did take a trade on the british us and demo only i said normally i don't try trade trading this time of night just because a lot of times even if they work out a lot of times they don't materialize during the daytime we'll get an alert we'll get into a trade and usually within about 20 minutes or out of the trade. This time of night, a lot of times I'll get in at 9.30 and it won't materialize till one, two, three o'clock in the morning. So I, I, so I said, this is a demo trade and I'll just let it run tonight and see if we're not out of it by the time the session is over. So we're using this just for demonstration purposes so that you folks that uh, that can't uh, be here during the daytime will have a chance to see some live uh, trade action here. Uh oh, I moved down my stop loss and it kicked me out the trade. <laughs> you hit your stop loss? What, uh, what trade did you take? The same GBP. USD. Uh, and you had a what was your how much stop did you give it? So so I was trading it and I put it um, below the sell order in order not to lose anything. Huh. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I it kicked me out. I, 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 it was too tight. Yeah, uh, that, a lot of times. Ideally, what I like to do is I like to find a an area. On the other side, like especially if I have a wedge, I like to have it on the other side of the wedge. Uh, but uh, generally, I use no less than seven pips, and sometimes I'll move it up to ten or twelve. But most of the time, I try and keep it around seven pips. Okay. If you have, if you have less than that, because right now you have almost a two point spread, so as soon as you enter the trade, you've already you're already down two pips. If you have like a five pip stop. That means all it's got to do is go against you three pips and you're out of it. Yeah. Uh, so I would give no less than seven to ten, and and we predicate our our uh, lot sizes based on that. And I said I'm still trying to find out where this uh, okay. where this thing I is. Chance. I took a chance and re-entered. So. No, oh, why can't I find it? I apologize for not being able to find this thing right now. So is 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 there is there um let's say I'm going back through these videos is there a, a group where I can ask like questions or well you can always uh, telegram me if you have a question what you could do is take a screenshot are you using uh, are you using uh, trading view for your charting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because yeah. you could, you can always take a, a snapshot of your chart. Show me where you draw the wedges, and then just send me a Telegram message uh, saying, "What do you think about this?" And uh, is this Al? And and yeah, this is Al. Again. <laughs> oh boy, I, I've been trying to. So, you said you're Al Mitan, right? Yes. In right. That's me. That's me. In Telegram. Okay. Let me try one more time. Yeah, try doing at A L. Uh, space, MIT. Or I'll type it in the chat in the chat box. MIT. Okay. MIT. M A N. M A N. And I think you have to put an at. It should be able to put an at side in front, and it should say uh, uh, add contact. I think is what you have to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you say the name again one time, please? Yeah, I'll I'll type it in the chat. I'll put, let me get the chat box open. I'll just type it in there for you. And then you can just uh, telegram me directly. I'll show me a picture of your chart and I'll look at it over and I'll make some comments and suggestions to you. Okay, thank you. Hey, Al. Yeah. The way I, I mean, I don't know how, uh, how married you are to the pound US at the moment, but the way I drew the, the wedge on the Euro USD that came in at 945 uh -huh. Eastern. I had to break out the upside of the wedge. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. Now, uh, I put, this is I nine forty five. Right. Nine forty five. It was That's, descending. Okay, it was descending. Okay. See now, I put my a um, higher up, which gave me more. Like I put it to the left. Like up here. Yeah. Okay, and there's and actually that's not a bad place because you have an anchor, you have a hit, and then you have the next one closest to where okay. uh, without going through. If you take this one all the way down, you're going through some bodies of the candles. Right. We don't want to go through the bodies. So yeah, so this was, that's that's a good trend line there. And, okay. and so this yeah, one's pretty much I had, flat. Yeah, I had that flat, yeah. Okay. Okay. It looks good to me. That looks okay. good to me. Because I know you, you know, we try not to go uh, before the break period, you know, but Correct. I just felt that it seemed like a better hit there. So a I lot of times, what I to, especially early in this, like this time of the evening, what I'll do is I'll go back over to the last pivot higher low, if I can, into the previous day, because the, the day before's price action is significant, mm -hmm. and if, so you can see we're like we had a. Let's see, where was the, it came in, actually we had a couple of highs here and it had a nice big move down during the daytime. It sort of stalled just before the end of the day. So using this for a pivot, even if you wanted to you go up to that one, it would still be good. Because this was a nice big move. This That's what I initiated. Yeah, this red, coming out. Okay. This, this red it. candle, this red candle, that's a strong move down on a five minute chart. And so that's significant. And then it came back and retraced. And now this is where it's been basing. Once it gets yeah. done basing here, which is where you have that, that nice, nice hit. Here's a nice hit here. There's nothing wrong with that triangle. That looks very good to me, actually. Okay. And now you just have to wait. But you're going. But the trouble is, Euro US pair this time of day, sure. you're not going to get a lot of volume to it. And that's where that's the best biggest problem is that if this was during the daytime. Uh, you'd be in a really good shop because, let's see, we're having, that's at 848 to 31. This is about 15, 18 pips. That's a nice range. That's a nice range for the for the wedge. And if it breaks out, you're looking to see, come over here and see if there's anything over that you have to be looking at for a possible target area. And you just expand these out to a higher time frame and just see where these wicks are. Here's the wick right here. This could be a nice little target right in this area. Mm -hmm. That would be drawn like something like that. I found that calculator, by the way. Oh, great. I'll, I'll bring that up here. Yeah. So here's, here's the calculator that we use. And so here's the way this works. If let's say we're on the, like we were looking at the British US, 
So the British US is basically $10 a pip with the standard lot size. So we'll just go and we'll put, uh, this is the older version of, we do have a newer version to put to give everybody. And the pip value is 10. And let's say you want to use the seven pip risk is what we do. So let's say you have a, let's just use a $500 account and you want to risk, we risk, basically we're, we're willing to risk 2% of our account with a seven pip stop. So basically if you use the seven pip stop, 2% of your account, you would be risking $10. In order to do that, you'd have a lot size of a 0.14 lot size. And that would be if you got stopped out with seven, with seven pips, you'd lose $10 with this lot size. If you had a 10 pip uh, stop, you can see that rather than being a 0.14, it's just now a 0 0.10, still only risking $10, still only risking 2% of the account. And, uh, and that's where this thing becomes really, if, with a lot of swing traders, what they'll do, they'll have like maybe a 60 pip uh, stop loss. Well, if you're risking 2% with a 60 pip stop loss, you're risking the same $10, but your loss size is only 8.02. So you can take that with a 60 pip, but what we're doing is we're saying, how many 60 pip moves do you get in a day versus how many seven pip moves do you get to the day? We try to fine tune our entries uh, very tight so that we're looking for a seven pip risk, seven pip target. And so we can take a larger lot size for the same risk. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Let's see, it's still here. Is it still there? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here, our, trade, our trade's starting to work out here. Okay. Yeah, so we have our target. Let me see, make sure we have our seven pip target. Okay. 13 pip risk. Now, with the, you see how it broke out. Right now, if we're looking, this is where these fib lines can kind of come in handy. Is that it broke this, the blue line, and here's where the here's where I drew this box, which from this retracement, off this big move, retrace back, and this would be where the next move would could, and it comes right down into where this fib line is. Here's our seven pip target, so it's got some room before it gets to this line. A lot of times you'll see the price will stall maybe halfway in between. And let me see if I can put, uh, if I can put this uh, calculator in the chat box or not. Let me try this. No, I can't do it with this one. Hmm. So again, I'm, I'm, uh, go ahead. Uh, was it Racine? R R yes, <laughs> I was. I was saying again. I'm fairly new, right? But well, that's okay. So, it's, it's hard. So hard to get such profits. You just make it look easy. <laughs> trust me. Trust you. It's not easy. But you just have a plan in place. Uh, you, you, basically, what we're doing in this room is we try to teach people how to read the charts. Uh, yeah. We use the the wedges. What the wedges are are nice because it alerts you, saying, "Hey, take a look at this chart. Take a look at this pair because something's going on here." Uh, yeah. That's the nice thing about the alert system. Uh, as you spend more time in this room and get more familiar with it, your eyes will start picking these things up and start picking it out. Yeah. And uh, you'll start learning where, uh, how prices react, how they react to certain price points, how they react with certain uh, pictures. You'll, you'll start looking at, seeing what it looks like. Okay. And, uh, and it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It just takes some time. Uh, but that's why we're here to help uh, guide you through that, that maze. And it's not, it's not hard. Uh, it does take a little bit of discipline. It does take some um, consistency. And the biggest thing is, is not to, is to go for those five or seven pips. Uh, get that 2%. If you can get 2% a day, 
uh, you're going to do better than most, almost 95% of the Forex traders out there. And it's not hard to get that 2% a day. All you need is one good trade a day. And then you can go and do something else and just build the account. And 2%, I mean, even like with this, the same thing, it, it, if you're still looking at, say you start with a $500 account and you can do this for a week, that's 10%. So now you, at 10%, now your account's $550. And you're still risking the same 7%, but now that seven pips is going to pay you $11. Now your lot size gets a little bit bigger. Well, and then next week you get another 10%. Well, now you're up to, you know, say, well, let's just say you get up to $750. Still the same 7% seven, seven pip risk, same 2%. But now each trade is going to pay $15, but you have a little bit larger lot size. And eventually when you start getting up into, let's say you have $3,000, same 7 pips, $60 a day. Now you're up to a 0.86. And nothing's changed other than the fact you're just increasing the lot size. Right. You're going for the same profits. And then when you start getting up into, you know, say, $5,000, now you're looking at $100 a day. That's $500 a week. So, so what happened, I started at $50 last week because um, I felt a little confident after doing demo trade to start trading live. Uh -huh. And I made like, with the fifty dollars in two days, I went up to like seventy dollars. Okay. Right. Uh huh. And I saw the gold trade, and it messed up my psychology. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> you know, first point is I do not trade gold. Yeah, I, 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 I buy I've, gold. I've, I buy gold. I hold gold. I sell gold. Right. I don't trade gold. Right. Uh, I. Mainly because I don't know how to. I don't know what. I don't understand the pip values. I haven't quite worked that out. Although I am thinking about doing that, but gold is a whole another animal. Um, yeah. So 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 when I went back, because after that I started, because um, I'm just trying to get my time, balance my time a little better uh -huh. with work and family and stuff. But I got to listen to two of Susan's videos so far, uh -huh. and that's exactly what she said. You know. And she gold. was explaining how gold is volatile and yeah. you know, it's best yeah. not to trade gold. And then I started reading up about user-friendly pairs. And, you know, um, sometimes I guess not all alerts that come in, you have to take it. <laughs> that is true. And and one thing that we're trying to also ter teach here is to which ones to stay away from and which ones that, that are tradable. And... Uh, and, and the things you don't always know for sure, uh, but oftentimes, especially there are certain times of day that are just better than others. Yes. Uh, early, mo I find early morning between six o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock. Most, I'd say, probably eighty percent of my trades uh, are filled and executed and done by eight o'clock in the morning. I usually get myself up about six thirty. I might see a six thirty or six fifteen alert. I'll get on the charts, I'll draw the, the wedge, I'll take the trade. And oftentimes by eight o'clock, when I start these sessions, eight o'clock, I'm already out of the trade and I'm done for the day. So depending on, uh, depending on where you live, what time zone you're in or what time you have to go to work, uh, that is a, oftentimes a possibility for you. This is not a bad time um, for people on the West Coast or people that are living in Hawaii because uh, it's still it's late evening, but it's not overly late. The problem I have is being on the East Coast. Like I said, this is at, uh, right now we're at nine. What time is it now, right now? 10.24. 10.24. So, yeah, we're almost, we're actually almost done with this session here. Uh, but at 10.24, this thing, now this thing is actually working out pretty well, all in all. Yeah, for a night. Uh, we, had, we had a nice, we had the alert at 7.15 this, or 9.15 this evening. Nice big move, 13 pit move down, came back, retraced, and then it, we, we were, able to, it, we were able to draw another wedge. This is one that I just freehand drew. There wasn't an alert. Here's where the alert was. But I saw this came down. I saw a pullback, came up and tested this. And you can see where it sort of, it has its own little trend here from low to high. And then we had the break. And a lot of times too, what I'll what I'll try to do is uh, here's the there's the high. 
and I'll just I'll just take the D and just flatten it out on the top. But uh, or the other one, a lot of times, I'll, sometimes I'll start. I've started doing this a little bit more just the other day. Is I draw where the where the point is, where the peak is, and there isn't much of a peak out here. I mean, if I take this all the way back, well, no, I can't really draw it from here because it's too. Uh, I, I like getting these points out here a little bit further, but what I what I'll what I was doing with this particular case is I was using this this angle here. We had a nice little wedge that came up. It sort of broke out, but sort of went side. It, it did break. It went sideways. But now you see it's kind of respecting this other, which which is actually this is the top of the extension of where the top of this original wedge was. And you can see where it's just now starting to follow that down. It's following the moving averages down. Let me take this one off here. Uh, take this off. You see where it you, you came down and it, it, it sort of went higher, higher lows, higher, low, higher highs, lower high, or higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And then it started flattening out up here at the top. And then so you had a nice little trend line Basically, here's where the wedge was right here. From here, oops, from here to here. Here's a hit, here's a hit. You can see where, and then you flatten it out the top. Here's where the wedge, so you have an anchor, a near hit, a hit, came up, based all in between, came out, violated it with this red candle, came out, Came back up, retested the wedge, retested this other bigger wedge, and now it's back trending on down again. And actually, this formed a little wedge in itself from from here. And you'll start seeing these uh, as you uh, as you get used to uh, drawing these things and start looking for them. Here's an anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a near hit. Here's a hit. Had a little bit of a upward slope. It broke, and now it's, ret now it's heading back down again. Now, if I was in this trade live right now, I'd be looking at saying, I'd probably just be looking at saying, okay, it's 10.30, time to begin calling it up, now wrapping it up, going to bed, and I'll just go ahead and take the trade off, and I would... Uh, Say there's there's my profit. See how much profit did we make on this? Where is that right now? Um, say, say that again. You said you would go in the trade. Well, I would. Well, the fact is, like it's like ten thirty at night right now. So, well, actually, no, we were going to eleven o'clock tonight, aren't we? I think we're going to eleven o'clock. I didn't know. Yeah, I think we're going to eleven. So right now, yeah, I'm still in this trade. Right now, I'm right at five five point six uh, pips right now. Still shooting for the seven pips. I'm shooting for okay, this area so down here. Is it that you made another sale or? No, 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 no. I, I haven't. Uh, this is the original one that I took uh, when we oh, first. Oh, okay. okay. First... I thought you had closed the order when you had said that. Yeah. yeah. No, I, pips. <laughs> I, I was, no, wait, no. I'm, this is my seven pip target right here. That's okay. my seven pip target. We got in right up here is where we entered. And we entered, we entered, I entered the trade pretty much on this candle, but this is where the fill was because I lost two pips on the spread. Okay. And so keep in mind that in order to get the full seven pips, it's gonna to have to go down here two pips in order to get filled. Oh. So should I go in again and try to get two more? No, no, if you're not in the trade now, you don't go in right now because you yeah, should, you, we, yeah, this is this is where yeah. you can get into trouble. Once it leaves the wedge area, if I can't yeah. get in up here, I don't it take the trade sense. unless it comes back and gives me an opportunity. Like, like yeah, here, I, I missed I missed this entry. I wasn't I wasn't here to see this, but when I saw yeah. it came back up, formed another wedge pattern. Then I said, okay, it came up, retested the retested the wedge again. This thing may right. still keep on going down. So, so about that first drop down, right? Uh -huh. That first um, movement down, downwards, downtrend. 
Yeah. Uh, sometimes, how do you really know if you're going to wait? So, like, after that first candlestick, you wait for the second candlestick. That's when you you go in the trade, right? Generally, generally speaking, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Now, this one, this one really didn't give you that opportunity because, I mean, this candle was, let's see, how big is this candle? 3303 to basically closed at uh, this. This is a this single candle is six pips. That's about the size of what a 15 minute candle is normally during the daytime. So that was a That's huge true. candle. So, so this one, this minutes. one, this one did not give you much of a chance because normally what I would be saying is I would say here's your wedge. You get a candle that comes in. It's got to close below the wedge. Right. This this candle right here did not close below the wedge, so I couldn't take the trade yet. Right. So you wait for the next one. This one came down, closed all the way down here, and never looked back. So this one didn't really give you a chance to get in until over here. And even then, it really didn't come all the way up into the wedge. This is why I hesitated taking this one, because it never really came all the way back up into the wedge. But there was some other factors that, that helped me to determine to take it. And one of them was the fact that it came back up near the near where my entry zone was, which is this area between the wedge and this red line. It came sure. up near that. I had the RSI came up to the 89, and when it hooked, it gave me a red candle. And I said, okay, I'm looking to take this thing short, but I wanted this candle because this one closed below all my moving out. All my moving averages were now in the right direction. I had my 62, and my I had my cross at my 5 and 13. Now, it did stall a little bit some more, but then it still, then finally it, it broke. And right now you can see where it, it didn't give me my full seven pips, and now you're looking to see where it's starting to retrace a little bit again. So this is not a bit, so rather than wait for it to stop me out all the way up here, if it comes and crosses and closes above this 62, this white one, I'll just close this trade out. Yeah. I have a question. Uh huh. Uh, so, what about if uh, they send in like a trade and uh, maybe you were late to pick in the trade? Maybe after like ten to twenty minutes, is it still, uh, is it possible you can still get into a trade? Uh, I'm not sure I understood the question. Say that one again. Okay, what I'm saying, let's say maybe uh, there's an alert for a trade for like maybe let's say like 8 p.m. right, and you didn't you didn't pick up the uh, the trade, and you came you made the trade like maybe like 8:30. Can you see like go for the trade or you just let it go? I just let it go. If, if oh, I okay. if I don't get my entry, I just let it go. If I can't get if it if it doesn't give me the entry I'm looking for, I just let it go. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the entry I'm basically basically the entry I'm looking for. Now on this one it actually is on on this secondary wedge, you can actually see where actually I drew this wedge right here, this yellow one. Now th this is the one where the alert I'll make this one a little bit heavier. This is where the alert came in. Let me see if I can now uh, let's make this one a little bit bigger here. This is the one where the alert came in. And this was the move out of it. I couldn't it, it didn't fit my criteria to get in, so I couldn't get in. This one came all the way back down through six pips. I don't want to take the trade. Just because it came down like that, I don't want to take the trade. Even though, I mean, it made another 13 pips, but it could have just as easily just come. I could have gotten in here. It could just easily come back up here where I would have wanted to get in and, and stop me out. Now I just lost myself. So I'm just going to wait. I just If I can't get in like I want to, then I'm just not going to get in. Here's the other wedge. Came back out. Here's it broke. Now, uh, let's see. This candle here. It came in, closed below. Gave me a blue candle. Came up, tested the wedge, and we had the crossover of the RSI of the uh, moving averages. That's one reason why I was able to take it. Generally, I would say I want a red candle on the one minute. No more than the second red candle or blue. You get the blue candle. And then I want to enter at the bottom of that blue candle. In other words, if you can work it, if you could, if you have the time, you have the red candle, strong blue candle back up to the wedge. 
Okay, I'm going to say if it comes back down to this area right here where that yellow line is, if it comes back and it fills me, as it, this one came up, retested the wedge, gave me a red candle coming down, it probably filled me on this red candle. But my fill would have been up here, not down here. But once I got the crossover of the moving of these moving averages, because you see, like on these moving average right here, where you have the the five, the thirteen, and the sixty-two is way up here. Once you got this cross over here, now it's going in the wrong direction. It's coming up, and it came up. It retested the sixty-two. Now we have to wait for these things to come back around, give us moving in the right direction. Because usually, these things will change. Well, it probably didn't take more than five or six pips for this thing to go from green cross and yellow to the green, to tagging the 62. Let's see what the time, let's see how much this was there to there, six pips. So this is like this whole area where it came in, crossed over, tagged the 62, and came back and then crossed over again. We had the break, we had the crossover, everything's still moving in the right direction. So we're getting the crossover again right here but it was also respecting this this uh, trend line right now. If I get a break up here and then come back and test, I'll be out of this trade. I'll just take my little profit and go with it. Because if we're getting the crossover, it's going to probably come up and retest this. Now, if you're still profitable and you want to sit and watch it, let it come back and test it. Well, we might as well let it do it now. We'll see if it tests this. If it tests, if it breaks this, it may be looking to go on up and retest this upper trend line here. But rather than taking a full stop out all the way up to here, if I have this crossover like that, I'll just look about getting out and looking for a re-entry. I'll be patient with it right now because we're only talking three so, pips. From here, so that's uh, 93 to here is 96. We're only talking a three pip move, three pip range, and we're still basically right at break even right now. And it's, and you see where it tested the 62 up here, it's testing the 62 right here right now. And we also have the hook. But this trend line was basically still left over from the wedge, and if we could probably just turn that out right now. And you can see that uh, if we go from, you're constantly looking for trend lines, uh, trend lines for hits. So here's, here's, this this was an area where it couldn't penetrate it. So I'm gonna take this last one. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna test this. Now this did penetrate it. Now this thing could come down, retest it, and then keep on going up. But this is going down. This is still showing weakness. The dollar is still showing strength to the downside. So I'm just going to stay in this trade. I'm just going to view this as just another pullback. Al, I'll be right back. Okay, Christine. Al. Yes. Um, just so um, I'm getting this right, right? Okay. The moving trends, the moving averages, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Do you normally before you enter, whether you're making the entry in the 15 minute or not, right? But I, I, generally, I, generally, I generally make my entries on the one minute and then I'll track it on the five minute normally. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah okay, the, the, so. the, alerts, the alerts are given reference to a 15 minute chart. That's why we start drawing them on the 15. But, right. but what I'll do then is I'll draw it on the 15 like I did, but then I'll come over to the one minute chart and I'll fine tune it right to that exact point where the exact high. And a lot of times on a 15 minute chart, this thing may be sitting over here, but the real point is right here. So I'll bring it up, I'll bring it over. Okay, so you you readjust the wedges on the one minute chart. Correct. And 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 and, and cause I mean everybody has different strategies and sure. you know. Yeah, that's right. But 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 but, but what I'm getting is um that 
one from my understanding the 63 is like it tells you the trend in which the market is going so if yeah. it's under it's 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 downtrend when it goes over the line it's an uptrend right correct and then and then the smaller ones tell you if it's going up or down in correct. that yeah system. right is it I, I, is it always accurate though in the sense that if it crosses um if 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 if, if, if let's say 5 and 13 crosses on an uptrend mm -hmm. Do, do you always get what you want in terms of, let's say, five pips, three pips, seven pips? Uh, or, normally, or you can't use that alone? You can't use it alone. No, you really can't use it alone. I, uh, it's just uh, an additional confirmation. Yeah. Uh, I'll see this. I'll see it flip around on the one minute a lot. That's one reason why I really prefer to actually track it on the five minute chart because okay. it's, it's not as volatile. And you'll, you'll see that let me just take all these things off of the, this five minute chart here. Right. And I'll see if you can see. You can see that it's, it follow, it, it's not quite as volatile, I guess you could say. You can see where it came up. It tagged it, rejected it, mm -hmm. tagged it, rejected it. This is the third. This is the one I, I really like to follow this on the, uh, the, the five minute chart, the 13 moving average. And if you see, when you see it, like when you get an alert and you see it, oftentimes what you'll do is you'll see it come up and it'll just tag the 62. And that's and I'll use that as a target sometimes, or I'll use a place that, you know, if if I have a wedge, right? And let's say I have, I have a wedge, and it just comes up. Let's just say for just use this for example. Say you have this, and here's your wedge, and it breaks, and I have a 62 sitting right up here, and it's only like three pips away. I won't even take the trade, or I'll look at when it hits that. I'll look and see if I get a hook on my RSI, and say I'm gonna maybe take it short, even though it broke out of the wedge. I'm gonna take it short because, oftentimes, what it is, you'll get a lot of head fakes. Like this would be like a head fake. It pops up. You can only get three or four pips. Comes back down in, and then it takes, goes and takes off to the other side of the wedge. And this would be okay. an, sometimes this can be a nice entry. If you let's say you get it and it goes up higher. Well, you may lose a couple pips, but you have a better chance of making that those five pips on the downside, if because this will normally normally this will hold. Now, if it uh, breaks, now you're now you're off to the races. Right. Especially if this thing breaks and this thing's going flat, and you start seeing the hooking a little bit, now right. you've got a new trend developing. So 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 another thing, another question. Uh huh. You say you draw the wedges on the five-minute chart, right? I, I draw them on the 15, and I tweak them on the five and the one. Okay, okay. See so yeah, my bad. Yeah, so, the, so yeah the initial wedges, is, initially I draw it on the 15. Okay. So the next thing is, you remember that big drop? Yeah. Where you have the... Here? Yeah. So on the RSI, right? Uh-huh. Um... Where does it hook? It hooks right there. Where the right, right. That's here. where it hooks, right? Right at the eighty-nine. So, 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 I know that. Um, how do you use the I? How do you how do you use the RSI to decide when to enter? I would prefer to enter short when it's up here, right. and long when it comes down here. So in other words, okay. like, if, okay. so if it's up, if it comes up and it breaks out of the wedge, and it's looking right. like this, right? Uh, it's it's. Let's just say that a lot of times, if I take the trade just because it broke out of the wedge, without right. having this thing pulling back a little bit, right. a lot of times I'll find myself getting stopped out because I'm up here, I'm getting in, it thing pulls right. back because you you'll see this thing goes from from 89 to 11, 89. Right to 11. Now this one came up a little bit. Now a lot of times too what will happen is if it comes up here it hooks and it comes back down here to around the 60 and it hooks again right. that would be a way, that's usually a pretty strong indication that this, this thing still has a lot of steam to the upside. But uh -huh. you're better off in waiting and say okay if I don't want to take it long right now because right. I mean, right, even like at this spot right here the, uh, the British pound was strong which says okay yeah, the British pound is strong but I got this hook. 
wait for it to come back and then hook again and then take it after it's already save it crossed here wait for it to come back hook again and then take but in this case by the time it got down here it's already out of the bottom of the wedge right right this thing's just about ready to take my target so 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 ideally you always try to take it make an entry above the 70 is it is it 14 you use or eight uh the uh for the which one RSI. Oh, oh, the rsi yeah. the blue one period the, the blue one is a three period Ah, okay. the oranges and the oranges an eight oh, okay and you see like once the blue crosses over the orange there's your up move once the blue crosses the orange there's your down right. move and I like to I like seeing that where it's can, below. Can you the, say that one more time, okay. please? When the you, said, you have the blue up 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 here, right? It hooks. It right. Makes, okay. So you see where it hooked? It, it hooked yeah, yeah, yeah. right up there. Yeah. It hooked, and now across it crossed the orange one. Right. And also, you're looking at it. It closed below the bot the bottom of the blue candle. If you can get a close below, especially like on a on a five minute chart, if I get a if I get a blue candle up, and I get a red candle, and it bounces around, when it when I get a close below the bottom of this blue candle, let me see if I can pull this up here. So we're just about out of this trade here. Mm -hmm. I close right below the bottom of this blue candle. On a one minute chart, I usually like to look at two candles, but a five minute five minute I could work with one. This one didn't close below. We didn't quite get the cross over here, but then this next one closed below. Uh, when this one closed, this candle opened. This candle was blue first. As right. soon as that blue candle came back and turned red, I'd be in that trade. Which, which makes sense. It would be your confirmation somewhat. Yeah. Now you see how this thing's coming down? Now, we don't have a hook yet, but it's starting to hook. Right. It came all, it came all the way down here. It hooked. It came up, gave us a little bit of heat. But you know, it's still staying pretty much below this 60-40 range. This is right. the middle range here, 60 and 40. It came, see, it came right down to my target, but it didn't take me out because I didn't get the spread. So, so how do you know it's 60 40? How do I know? Yeah. Uh, just, I just, it, someone told me it was 60 40, and I believed him, and I've been using it ever since. I'm going to take so, this trade. Okay. I'm going to close this trade off here because right now it's. Okay, so go ahead. Go ahead. How do I? It just, it's just a good number. It, it was a one of the instructors that I had over the years. Use yeah. the sixty forty, uh, and and I, and he used it a lot. He was he's a very qualified instructor, so I just use that. I also uh, use the eighty nine and the eleven. Okay, so which one is eighty nine and eleven right now? Uh, the eighty nine is the one up. The blue one at the top. Okay, that's the eighty nine, and the blue one at the and blue one at the bottom is the eleven. Okay. So, and then so, the middle one is the, uh, this this middle range. The top one is a sixty. Okay. And the bottom one here is a forty. Oh, so 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 so. Uh, <laughs> all right. So this is new to me, right? Um, okay. In the sense that, so the the my mentor, our so-called mentor, uh -huh. um, that introduced me. Well, he's my mentor. He's just very busy right now, right? Okay. But he he had encouraged me to use seventy thirty. Uh huh. It's... That's another very common one to use. Okay. Okay. In fact, okay. I think I think Susan Badgelder uses seventy five, and thir and twenty five. Yes, Susan uses and she uses RSI eight. Yes. Right? Yeah. But but your combination it it. It seems like it 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 adds to it adds to it adds to our analysis because it gives you more confirmations. 
you know. But, and, but also adds to more confusion for people sometimes too. So, keep, <laughs> keep, you know, the, the, the thing is, it's, the, the more things you have, the the, 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 it's the so, it, it, sometimes you can overanalyze to the point where you can never take a trade. Paralysis because, right. by analysis. <laughs> you know, analysis by paralysis or paralysis oh. by analysis. Right, right, right. right. Uh, so <laughs> you have to be very, very careful not to have too much. Uh, but they they do work together. They do work together. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm at seeing where it does. Um, I'm still not understanding why. I'm well. I'm not fully getting the the triangular wedges and stuff that the fancy things that you do as yet. But I guess as I go along, I'll, well, I kind of get it. But yeah, well, well let I me just along, let me just let, let me just draw this again and see if I can simplify it for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, while we have a chance here. Okay, so we had the alert. And here, here's a, a little bit kind of what I what I tried to do. We had right. the alert. I come in and look and see where the alert was. Uh, uh, we were looking at the British US. Okay, so the British US ascending at 9.15. So we come over here and, and if you do send me your charts, make sure you put the vertical line at the where the alert was, so that way I didn't have that for the reference. Okay, no okay. problem. Okay, so so basically, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm just going to do a replay here for you, just to kind of. So this is what we're looking at on a 15 minute chart, okay? Sure. And I'll take this off right now too because we don't need to be looking at that right now. So this is strictly price action analysis. Now I'm looking. Here's where the alert. I'm looking for the previous pivot high, and previous pivot low. Now, one thing about this, again, this time of day, here's where the daybreak was. So it was a new day. And generally speaking, a lot of times from five o'clock, there's about a half hour, a half hour, an hour, I don't remember what the exact time is, that they just, basically the brokers are rebalancing their books. So oftentimes this time of day, things are really quiet and you don't have a lot of volatility. So I mean, like from here, like from here, this is, uh, 31, say 3120, down here is 30. So there's 26 pips. So that's, this one really isn't too bad. But a lot of times you'll see from, from here to like nine o'clock, there may only be six pip move in here. And that's just not enough to draw anything because there's not enough volatility to make any trade worth its while, especially if you have a two pip uh, spread. So I want to see at least, uh, I like to see at least 14 pips or so different, uh, range. And so, but basically here's my alert. I go from the previous pivot high and pivot low. So let's just use this for example. Now, if I didn't have that, I would go over to here. I'd, uh, and you see like this low right here is about the same as this low. So you could go, and then I go to the one that's closest. So pivot high, so, and you see both of this point here is pretty much the same as here. This is pretty much the same as that. So you could actually draw a box. And I'll do this oftentimes. I'll draw a box from here. Oh, where is it? So my range from here to here. That's my range box. This is where this thing is. And basically, price code, think of it this way. Price either goes up, it goes down, or it goes sideways. Right now it's going sideways inside this box, but it trends up and down on this time frame. Okay? So I would start my wedge from a pivot low to a pivot high. So I'm gonna come over here with now I could just, just take a regular trend tool and I could just go, it was ascending, so I could go from here to here. And there's 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 one trend. Or I can go from here to there, which draws a little bit of a wedge. And so that's really, now that's the box. We have a high, a low. You have a lower high and you have a higher low. That pretty much draws out a wedge. Now, rather than using two of these tools together like this, what I do is I just use the triangle tool. And I go from low to high to a higher low to a lower high and I have the same and I have the same effect 
Oh, so you use one of the options to decide the triangle. What's it called? It's just a triangle. What it's doing is drawing two trend lines: an AB, an AC line, and a right. DD line. Now, the nice thing about this tool is I can take this D, and I can slide it around. Now, if you notice that the A, as I move the D, the AC trend line stays the same. It'll extend right. out, but it still stays a trend. Right. Or if I take the C, I can move that around and the BD stays the same. So what it does, it gives me a, some flexibility that where if I have a point here and now I have a, another lower high there, okay, or I can say, okay, I'm just going to flatten this out. And let's say you see this thing. Let's just start moving this thing along and see what happens here. Okay, so now this this one's not a really good example because it just came. You see that one minute, that one candle just came right on down like that. But it did come back up, I believe, into. Now this was. So if I were looking at this, now this is on a 15 minute chart. So. Is now starting a new downtrend. So now what I could actually do is I can take my my D, and as this thing pulls up, I can use this line to follow this another trend coming on up here. And then when this one breaks, I might be able to get a little bit earlier entry for this one. But the original alert was here. That was the original. And generally, I try not to move these once the alert. Once it goes, I try and keep it if I can, but sometimes it just makes sense to move them a little bit, um, especially if this thing was a lot wider. Now this thing's not that wide, so I, I'm just gonna keep it like that, wait for it to come back up and retest the wedge. We had a nice move down, it's coming back to retest it. Let's do another, let me put this on a five minute chart here, if I can. Uh, I was afraid of that. I lost my lines reference. Here. I lost my lines here. Okay, let me just redraw it real, real quick. Yeah, it was nine fifteen. Nine fifteen. Okay, and then we had the we drew it from hello. Oops. We had a low to a high to a higher low, to a lower high, we had the break. Now you can see where with this break, you can see it's starting to trend up a little bit as it's trending up. This is actually another little flag pattern. So if let's say you take it from, well, let's see, let's see if I can take it from the top of this candle here. And this is my own drawing of this. This is a kind of a continuation of a which from here to here comes back up and I'm looking to see where I can pick up another a, a flat top and another in another trend so here's here's the top actually I'm going to take this one over here I'm going to bring this one down I like this one a little bit better. Wow! When I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> so, 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 so you see, so, 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 so what you're, what we're doing is, that is funny. We're, we're finding another trend here. So here's the bottom, and you see where it's sort. I mean, it, it, it's not making a real strong trend, but it is a little bit of a trend in there. If I put this on a five-minute chart, what well, is on a five-minute chart? Uh, so that once we get this thing flat across. And bring my. I'll, I'm gonna keep the C right over here. I'm gonna bring this D. I'm just gonna bring this D down to where. Oh, I'm gonna put it down right about. What I'm doing is I'm bringing the D right across to this light where this blue candle is here. If it, I'm give, I'm using that for a reference. This, the body of this blue candle. Now if it comes down and breaks this thing. I'm, 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 we want to take it again because now this, this move has come up. Look at your moving averages. 
Let's see if you're moving averages. You see how this green line came up? This came up to the yellow one. It didn't cross it yet. Let's see what happens with the next candle. Let me widen this out here a little bit. Next candle. It's just, based, it's just coming straight across. You don't have a close below this candle, this uh, body here. I'm looking at the body of this candle. If I can draw these darn things. I'm looking at this. I want to see a close below the body of this candle. Didn't close yet. Still didn't close. It's getting close. There's the close. There's the break of the wedge. Close that candle. Didn't close below the B. So you have another little obstacle here. Now the question is, do you have enough room from here to here? We're only looking at two pips. So I would. So now before I actually take this trade, I want to see it break and close below this below this area right in here. I want to see it close below that. Didn't close. Now it did break the trend, but it didn't. It broke the trend. It closed below the trend. Have a blue candle came up, tested the wedge, couldn't close above the wedge. That's a significant area right there. And we have all of our moving averages are in the right place. I say, okay, I could, I could probably take this trade because now I have a hook here. See, it, it came down and hooked. It stayed below the 60, uh, this 40 area. It still stayed below the eight. And we have another hook. This thing could very well go down from here. Let's just see what happens. Still well, testing the trend. Still testing it. Again, it went up, wicked up, still couldn't close above it. Close. Now we have a new, new, a lower low, of these, of this candle that closed below all those other bodies. Still didn't close below this wick, but it did close below this blue candle. That's a good sign. Everything's moving down. You have two red on the hulls. The dollar is showing strength to the to the British pound. Dollar is the second currency of the pair. That means it's getting stronger as it's going short. Let's take the next candle. Now we have a little doji there. That right now the buyers and the sellers are all equal equilibrium. Now what happened? And at the end, that must be the end of the game. That must, that's, and that's where we are right now. I think this thing's over. Yep. End yeah. Of, so, and that's and that's pretty much how we how I, candle by candle, how we looked at that. That was very good, Al. So, anyway, it's getting late. What time is it? It's probably... Uh, 11.03. Yeah, 11.03. Yeah, I think we're going to wrap this thing up. I can't, yeah. I, I, I appreciate both of you guys coming in tonight. Thank I, you so much, sir. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, we're here every uh, Wednesday night. Uh, every Wednesday. There's only a couple of people here tonight, so uh, when we have only have a few people. I'll turn the mics on, and we can just have a little bit of a private coaching session for you. Okay, uh, quick question. You said you were going to give us the name for uh, I think, uh, uh, Telegram? Yes, did that work? Did, I keep, they, did you, I keep, did you I try that? No, I keep seeing no result. It's uh, in the chat. At, um, yeah, I put in the... Do a... Let me see if I can... Now, we were working on this t the other day, trying to... Um, contact, let me see here. If you so go to if, if you if you go to tell here I'll show you what it, what I tell you what I just did here, and maybe this might help. Um, I'll share my screen here. You can see my Telegram screen. No. My Telegram screen. Okay, now, yes. okay. If you go to the upper left hand corner. Yes. Uh, this is me right here, Al Mittman. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a sec. Uh, okay. I missed that okay. one. If I go to the. If you go to contact. And you should be able yeah. to say add contact. Right. And then put my but, name. But, put put but, at but, do, do the at sign. Type uh, okay. in type in at uh, I think this this should work. Space. 
and type in that. You don't. I don't think you need the phone number. And then just yeah, click on, and then click on create. I, I, I think I think when I tried, uh, let me try it again. Like how you did it. Just okay. Now. Yeah. Try. Yeah. Try again. We'll see why. We'll do it right here, right now. And then click on create, and then should it should pop up. I think. Add con or going contacts plus. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about the phone number. I don't think you need the phone number. No, you actually, don't. Oh, I, actually, you know what? Um, here, you know what? I think I did something wrong here. Here's, here's the last name here. There we go. Try this. So let me look at what, what you're suggesting. I don't know if you need the ad or not. That's uh, So every time I click I next, it you. vibrates. It vibrates saying I need a phone number. Well, indicating that I need a phone number. But let me try the. Let, let me try putting the last name in the last name section, even though it says it's optional. Uh, Nick I made the so wrong. I that, yeah. Christine, why don't you try? See if I can see if I can get you. I already have you as a contact. Oh, so, you do? Okay. Yeah. Um, but I can try doing it again. Let me, let me just see. Uh, I just did Eva the other day. Mm -hmm. you're, you're from the States, United States? Uh huh. I am. Yes. Uh, Oops. Oh, I didn't want to do that. See, on, your, on my contacts, you're just list, there's no at sign, it just says your okay. name. Yeah, just, just try to create it with, uh, just try to create it with my name and. And it, it may ask me to accept it, and that's fine. I can do that. I, uh, where, I don't, where, where, I don't, where I don't see it. Uh, let me see if I see. I, I, I think I see, well, in the country, in the country, it has Jamaica. Let me see if I can deselect that. Yeah, the, yeah, the country shouldn't make any difference, I wouldn't think. I think it's not coming up uh, because I'm using my phone. I don't know. Uh, that could, that may have something to do with it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm using my phone as well. But I know, yeah, I, some, I know, I know, I know. It, it should. I mean, it should because I, I know. Actually, a, a friend, someone called me the other day on Telegram using a Telegram phone. And no, yeah. that, that, that really works. It's no? only when they have your phone number is going to pump up. So without phone number, it's not going to pump up. Yeah. Mm. He's so right. He Uber, it's correct. Yes. So, so I just, not gonna pump up. So I just try to redo it as you know, just do a second new contact, and it is yes. requesting your phone number, Al. Oh, yes. So, yes. so you need my yes. phone number. Yeah. All right. What? What's? What's? What's well, the other I, I, guy well, in the queue? What about emailing? You? Well, here I'll. I'll ask you. Don't use my phone number or give it out to anybody. <laughs> no, I. I I'll tell you what. I'll give you. I, I'll tell you. I'll, let me give you a number and see if it works. Uh, right. Well, well here, here's my number here. You see it? Yes. No. Six six zero one three seven four five. Three seven four five. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me try now. Yes, sir. Let's see, six, see if that works. Can you repeat it? Six six zero one. Uh, 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 three three six six yeah. zero one. Three seven four five. Three six. Three three six. Seven. So three three six six zero one three six three seven. No, three seven. Three seven. Sorry. Four five. Yeah. Seven four five. Is there a? Is there a? Let me see. One two three. Actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to have Brian set up a whole uh, channel for a uh, channel for people that can put in chat in there to so they can post their um, post their charts and stuff. That would probably be easier than trying to do it directly. Okay. I think he's up now. I think I see you now. You I'm Brian. Yes, I just send you a message. Okay, let me see if I can get it here. Yeah, you got it now. Oh, yep, yes. I see it. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Okay, and you're, uh, sir, where, where are you from? So I clove it. Um, I'm from Nigeria, but I live in Austin, Texas. Oh, okay. 
Nigeria. Oh, my yes. my wife teaches with a uh, fellow from Nigeria. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so, hello. Say hello. Uh, yes. Are you from France? Am I from France? No, actually, uh, Matt is uh, from French Canadian. Uh, French Canadian, but I'm I'm basically from uh, the U.S. here. Okay, born, and, born and raised. Right. Can, can I get the number one more time? It's three three six. Yeah. Six zero one. Six zero one. Three seven four five. Yep. Ah, uh, let me put a one before it and see. See. Valid you don't need to. I think you don't need to put one on it. I see you. I see you. I need to put the one there. And my friend. Are you in the state or you are in Jamaica? Jamaica, Jamaica. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I I put my I put in the in the chat. I put my name in Telegram. I can put my number two if you want, and you can add me as well. Yeah, give me your number. I, I see you both here. You're both on my list here now. Okay, good. Yeah. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to Brian and see if he can, we can get a channel set up so that people can just send their stuff into it. That, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would that would probably be helpful. That way Matt and everybody else can see it too and we can yeah. all can I make work the on list? that. So, yep, I got you here. I, I, really, I really appreciate this. I've been in this for two months now and just finding the time to kind of balance out everything. I, I, haven't, I, have... I haven't been in Susan's thing live, but she has two pretty good videos that I've been through already. Good. But I really appreciate your time, you know? Well, we're that we're here to uh, make it help you guys become successful at this. And yes, that's, sir. That's, thank you so much. That, I'm that's really so, scared to like kind of uh, go live on this, so I just want to like. Well, don't don't to, be don't go. You don't have to go. I'll tell you. Get your consistency first before you yes. go live. Yeah, yeah. Practice, I practice. Go live. Yeah, take all all those. Uh, I would say this: all the wedges, take them, trade them the way we're teaching you, and. You'll find out certain times of the day they work better than others. Uh, look for news announcements. Uh, you can't always predict which way they're going to go. All you can do is take each one and uh, and see and see if you can and try and find what what's consistent and what's not consistent. Yeah, uh, I already have my uh, auto trade going on, so I'm trying to like do this uh, manual trading. I really want to be perfect in it. Well, it takes time. All I, I can know. say is just stick with it and uh, be patient with yourself. Uh, and I say, as you go through these videos, and as you start, you'll start seeing that right when you're new, everything just looks like, well, this is just a lot of like a bunch of windy roads. But just I'm trying to break it down into piece by piece. I yes. mean, just just start looking at just a, a plain chart. I learned a lot today. You really, you taught me a lot today. That was really oh, great. Good. Well, we're. Uh, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. I yeah. sometimes I don't always know if I'm helping or confusing oh, people. Yeah. So you teach a lot today. Then one quick question, right? Like okay. maybe if you have a, a trade that is going on and it's on a maybe five minutes chart or fifteen minutes chart or thirty minutes chart, like okay, then if you now move it to like four hours chart, does it affect or not? Uh, I only use the higher time frame. I use I use a fifteen five and a one. I I I will go to the higher time frames only to see where a target may be. For example, as I'm looking at like this is the fifteen minute chart. Now let's say we get a break of here. I'm looking at maybe a four hour chart. And see, I, if I if I see like this nice big break, and I look over, I say I can't see anything. Well, I'll get onto a higher time frame chart. And see where the older the time was, and see, find out where the price stopped. So it was like, if I look here, like right here, there's a big move, big move up, came back down, retested, and then it shot right back up. Well, this area right here is important. This area here, if you go from this wick, let me just pull. It. Here's here's what I'll do, is I'll take this, take a, a, a little ray thing. I say, here's a wick. So I come across, here's a wick. I come across until I stop running into wicks. There's a wick, I come down, next wick. All these wicks keep, keep hitting wicks until I hit a body. And I don't hit a body really until like, here's what, this is the first body. I, everything else, there's a wick that covers the body. 
And so this is the first, this is the area that once it breaks through, th there's a bunch of spires in here. But if let's say I'm looking at go down a little bit lower. Let's see this this one's a good example. Here's a here's a body. See this this candle right this big red candle. Yes. Okay. Here here this the one right before that. Here's a wick. I come over here to the wick. Here's another wick. Here's a body. This is where I would expect to see it, it stall. Now, if I go to a lower time frame, I'll bet you're going to see there was a little bit of a bounce on this area. Let me yeah. see. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, there's a 15-minute chart. Well, actually, this one just blew right through that one. Yeah. Uh, but let's see. If I look at this area right here, you see it stopped right, it, it started stalling. And then, well, then right here it came down. This was not, this is not a real good example. But a lot of times you'll see, if you see a strong, strong candle and you see a bunch of wicks, right here is where, this is where the buyers came in. And so all this area here, once it breaks, this area is pretty much clear sailing down to, and you can see where this one, where it broke, it broke this level here. And there aren't a whole lot of wicks up until you get down to, and here's where this thing bounced. So you come over here and look and see where this, where the price left over here. And that's usually where it's going to come and re retest it. And that's how I use the higher time frames. Other than that, I usually don't go there. I usually go back maybe a day or two, and then that's about it. Because again, I'm only, there's no point looking for a seven pit move if you're looking at a, if you're looking at a one week or daily chart. You don't need to be looking. You're looking for bigger moves than that. If you're only looking for seven pips, you don't need to be looking at a weekly chart. A lot of sense now. Yeah, so I gotta go because I have a meeting. I got yes, at eight o'clock in, in in the morning tomorrow morning. So I pre again. I appreciate everybody coming out. Oh, I thank you so much, I, sir. I enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you whenever. I said we're here every morning at eight o'clock, and uh, every Wednesday at nine thirty. So if you can make it, come join us. We'd love to have you. Yeah, thank, I'll, thank I'll, you so I'll, much. I'll, sir. I'll, I'll, yeah. Thank you, man. All right. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, and, Al. I'll see you right. in the morning. Thank we'll you, Christine. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Christine. I'm glad you're a gentleman. You guys have a good night. Thank you.